Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides and I'm back here at Moss Nissan in Newport Ritchie, Florida. Came on down to the dealership on a rainy day and what better thing to do than to review some cars inside the dealership. What I have is a 2019 Nissan Rogue SV. You know, the market is changing in the auto industry. The whole segment is switching to SUVs and a lot of these manufacturers are trying to really make a standout, something that would get your attention not only physically, but also to what is mechanically and safety-wise happening underneath the sheet metal. If you don't know much about the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Rogue has actually been around since 2008, if you could believe that. So it's over 10 years old, and over the years, Nissan has been moving and moving, moving in a direction where as what you can see today with the 2019 Nissan Rogue SV, it really has that extra flair to make it stand out from the rest of the crowd. So let's go ahead and take a look at this 2019 Nissan Rogue SV. Now, about the Rogue, you can get it in different trim levels. This being an SV is gonna have a bunch of goodies and we're gonna get to that. I like what they did with the front, especially with the fog light, not a lot of fake plastic venting and whatnot, nice and clean. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that I could say to the front of this car is a lot of it is very clean styling. You could see that they're going with their V branding of grill. A lot of auto manufacturers are taking that grill area and they're using it as their brand image. So we have the Chrome V here. There's our large Nissan logo. Very nice with the gloss black. And I like the chrome trim. I think what they've been able to do with the Rogue compared to some of the previous generations is they gave it a definitely an upscale feel and look and increased the visibility of the car in a sea of SUVs because it seems like everybody's driving an SUV and people want something that really pops. What pops definitely is this beautiful white pearl paint job. Even under the fluorescent light in Moss Nissan, it has a nice sparkle to it. I like the uh, headlight housings. Very, very nice bright LED lights, nice market lights. It really has a distinctive flavor to it. If I was gonna zonk it, I would say that they maybe need to close this area down just a little bit because it almost has like a Tron look to it. I don't know if that's such a bad thing, but it definitely looks futuristic for an SUV. And I think that's gonna be the hardest thing is like I said, to stand out from the rest of the SUV crowd. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side of this 2019 Nissan Rogue SV. Now with this particular model, it has these nice 18 inch wheels. So it's good to have options. It comes with a 17 inch. These are the optional 18. I like the brushed aluminum. I like the gunmetal gray, very good look. And I, I'm telling you, it gives it that, I think a higher, scale feel to it. I like what they did the way that they took the molding and brought it around the wheel arches. Gives it a little bit of a, of a aggressive look to it. And being an SUV, that's something that's gonna be very hard to do is making an SUV look more aggressive. Let's go ahead and go down the side. Really like what they're doing with the side mirrors. Now what you're looking at is you have your integrated LED turn single, but I like the way that they painted the whole mirror. A lot of car companies paint the top and then leave this just ABS plastic. I like the whole paint job on it. As we go down the side, you can see how they took some of the chrome trim from the front of the car, brought it in around the doors, the door handles, very, very nice. Not too much to where it's gaudy, but it has a nice feel to it. Up up top, you have the roof racks. You could then attach your crossbars and actually mount kayaks, bicycles, all that kind of stuff. Because at the end of the day, these cars are used for people, with their families, with their things that they like to do outdoors, with kayaking and bike, bicycling and everything. So that's an important feature to have right from the showroom. You don't have to go out and get this added. Let's go ahead and continue down. I think one thing that they did smart here is this lower sill panel. I like the way they have the body line here. That's gonna give it a little bit more of a, a nice look to it, but I like this lower sill panel. Makes it look a little bit more off-road in a way to where it looks like you could take this down a trail road and maybe put the kayaks in a little bit further off the beaten path rather than having to put it in right off the pavement. As we continue our way back, I think Nissan's doing a great job with the rear quarter windows. Quarter windows, it may not seem like a big deal, but this rear quarter window actually allows the lines and allows everything to flow nicely and that's gonna give it a really, really great look at the end of the day. And I think that a lot of companies, they miss out on this area because it's such a distant a distinctive you know, styling feature that is in the back. Speaking of the back, I like what Nissan has done. They've used some gloss black 
to hide the bulkiness. I think that's one of the biggest issues with SUVs is how bulky they could be at the back of the car. So by using some gloss black, it actually helps cut down on that appearance. I like the roof spoiler that comes off the back of the hatchback area. You have the nice dark tinted glass with the white. It works perfect. And then as we work our way down, you can see they continue to take the chrome brought it into the tailgate area with the Nissan logo. And here's another nice feature that really makes me think Mercedes, makes me think BMW, makes me think Audi, is just the sim simplicity of adding this chrome piece across the back bumper area. Really gives it that upscale feel. I like the chrome trim down here. You have lots of room and space under, uh, underneath, no hanging mufflers or tailpipes or anything like that. And then a nice touch of ABS plastic to wrap up the whole package and make it cohesive. Speaking of the package, let's go underneath the hood and check out the 2.5 inline four. All right, guys, here we are underneath the hood of the 2019 Nissan Rogue SV. What you're looking at is that's a 2.5 liter inline four. So when we say inline, we're talking about the cylinders are gonna be in a line, the four cylinders pumping out 170 horsepower. This one's made it to a two-speed CVT transmission. I think I'm, if I'm gonna zonk this area of the car, it's gonna be that CVT. I know a lot of people wanna see Nissan, and I know some other car companies like Subaru shed that CVT and go to something a little bit more durable, a little bit more, um, when it comes to flexibility of gear ratios to get better gas mileage. Now, if you're wondering about MPGs, you're looking at 26 in the city, 33 on the highway. Not bad when you're talking about this segment of the SUV population, but this car, like I said, I think what probably would benefit it the most is that if it had the option of a turbocharge to add to that uh, power plant. Also, you can get the SV. This one is front wheel drive. You can get it in all wheel drive, which would also help with driving around, especially when it's wet out like this. But let's go ahead and check out the interior because I think you're gonna see some huge surprises in there from Nissan. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, here we are inside the 2019 Nissan Rogue SV. Let's start with the door panels. I do like the touch of leather material that is on the armrest and there is softer material by the window. Other than that though, I'm a little let down. I'm gonna to have to zonk most of the door panel because it is a harder plastic, especially the door pull. Like that's something, you know, they, I understand that manufacturers try to cut certain costs and put harder materials that are cheaper in certain places where we're not gonna put our hands very often. But on these door pulls, you're gonna be pulling that every day and they could have went a little bit softer on the material. Dash. Now, when I was saying you're gonna be surprised, I like the styling of the dash. I like the placement of the air vents. I, especially the center one looks very, very nice. Nice touch of class with the uh, gloss plastic around the air vents. But here's where it gets weird. So it's nice, beautiful here. This, you think, is gonna be the same material, but we're gonna zonk this area because guess what? Knock, knock, and nobody's home. This is a harder plastic than up here. Even down here around the glove box, still that harder plastic. I would expect at this price point, this should be the same material as the dash. Let's talk about these seats. They're comfortable. I like the style of them, but the design that they put on the material, I don't know why it has to look like this. It, it, did they do a survey and find out that this weird design in the material is what sells these seats? Obviously, you can get them in leather uh, if you go higher up the trim option level and check off those boxes. But at the end of the day, they are comfortable. Now, I'll be honest, I rented a 2018 Nissan Rogue on a recent trip to Utah and driving it for miles and miles and miles, very comfortable. But the overall style of the seat, this uh, I'm not liking. I do like the center infotainment area. You have a lot of gloss plastic. I know some of you hate that because of the fingerprints and whatnot and the dust, but it does give it a little bit of a higher upscale feel. If I'm gonna zonk the area, I would like the infotainment screen to be a little bit larger. A little bit larger on the infotainment screen. Uh, this one does have dual climate control, which is a nice touch, and it's very simple. The knobs turn very easily, very simple to operate. Down here in the little cubby, you do have the USB uh, jack for someone, and you got your 12 volt. Here's something very interesting is where they place the parking brake switch. Remember, this is something new that many, many cars are having is that electronic e-brake instead of having the traditional e-brake. I've never seen the button placement there. Kind of a little different, 
but it does clean up this area. This I'm not in love with. It, I like the styling, knock, knock. I don't like the hard plastic and where these cup holders are, I'm not too sure I really like the placement of them. Um, when I was on my trip, it didn't seem like a big deal, but I don't know, I just don't like the look here. This does have heated uh, seats, which is nice for both the passenger and the driver. Another cubby, now this is wonderful. I do like this armrest. I like the design that they decided to put in the faux leather. Very good size for this type of SUV, and it feels good, it has a wonderful feel. Why don't you come over here and I'll show you the business side of things behind this, believe it or not, flat bottom steering wheel on a Nissan SUV. Let's go check it out. All right guys, business end behind the wheel. It's interesting because when I look at this wheel, if I, if I just close my eyes to everything else, this looks like a wheel off of something a lot more sporty. It is a nice shape. It has a flat bottom, which I know a lot of people like. It is still surprising to me to see flat bottom in an SUV, but very just slim and trim, simplistic on the buttons. It has a nice feel. I like the leather. I like the notches that they put in. This seems a little too much like rental car, which go figure, I had a Rogue as a rental car, but. This to me seems like it could be a little bit more high scale. Maybe take some of the silver, that outside chrome, and bring it around the steering wheel, especially on this part. Like this doesn't look so bad, but take the shiny silver and bring it into the V down here. Everything else is very laid out. Look, they listened to me here. They had this, the, the shiny chrome looking plastic around the rings of the analog tachometer and speedometer, but they should have brought that into the steering wheel. I think it would help just make a more cohesive package overall. And I think that's really the big word, I'm, the big adjective for this car is that there's parts of it where it's very cohesive and there's other parts where it's lacking. Seating position, you do have on this SV um, eight-way electric uh, seats, which is a nice uh, way to make the seat fit the contour of your body. Also, depending on how many drivers you have in your family, you do have the memory seats that you could add to uh, the setting so that you could come in if your wife drove the car or girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever, son, daughter, you could hit that and that puts it right into the, into the setting that you had previously. But overall, not too bad. I just wish it had a little bit more. You know, the outside I feel makes you think that, okay, this is gonna be all upscale, but I feel like there's zonks to be found in the interior that hopefully I was able to bring to you. Speaking of the front seats, let's go ahead and check out the back seats. All right guys, time to get in the back seat of the, of the Rogue SV. You can see me being six feet tall, 200 pounds, I have a lot of room. The only thing that I feel like would be a problem for me as a passenger in this vehicle is the way that the roof line kind of curls down. It's a little close to the side of my head, but other than that, I have plenty of headroom up top. I think if you have younger children, that's gonna be a simple no-brainer. On the door panels, kind of the same zonks as before. Now what they did on the passenger, uh, back seat passengers, is that this is a harder plastic. Up front, this is a little softer, but back here to cut costs, this is a little harder plastic. You have the gloss black around the door handle. This is nice. The way that they went with the faux leather with the stitching all the way across really has a nice softness to it, a nice touch. You have a cup holder. They did also take into consideration that your passengers, especially if they're gonna be your kids, they're probably gonna get hot in the back seat. You do have rear AC vents for the passengers, which is a nice touch at this price point. Overall, lots of space. You even have this nice armrest that you have to pull the, it's almost like pulling a pin on a grenade. You pull that, down comes the armrest and you have two cup holders here. The great news is, this is a great point that you don't have to get the kids super big gulps because the openings to these cup holders, that's about the size of a sippy cup. That's about it. But I think really the back seat is comfortable just for about anyone, even on for a longer drive. Speaking of those long drives, what are you putting in the back of this Rogue SV? Let's go see the space that you have. All right, guys, here we are at the back end of the 2019 Nissan Rogue SV. This is probably gonna be the most important area for an SUV owner, that cargo space. What I like right off the bat is I do like the large open area. I feel like with some SUVs, you think like, okay, it's got this big, huge tailgate and you're gonna be able to fit about just about anything in the back. 
but then when you actually go to put it in there, you're kind of confined to the restriction of the opening. This one has a very nice large opening, lots of space. Here are some zonks. Time to zonk the back of this Nissan Rogue. The first off is I don't like the security shade. I don't like the way it just dangles down like that. It really doesn't do anything for me. It is easy to put in place, but then once you're done, there it is. Now, Nissan had their engineers do some work to the back to try to maximize space. And sometimes the greatest intentions, they're, they're wonderful, but the execution, maybe not so much. So let me show you a surprise with this. You could actually take this panel here and then you could lock it in and actually have two levels here. Now the problem is, is you really gotta be focused and know what's going on because when you pop this out, then it's like this, and then you might put it down like that. And look, I just put it down incorrectly. So I think what I would like to see from Nissan compared to some other manufacturers is where this stuff is all push button and play. Like you push a button, that would pop up. You have your dual storage. When you're done, it just locks back down. Having these movable panels with straps and stuff, it's, it's almost, I feel like I'm putting Christmas lights up. I mean, I really do. I feel like this is, just really awkward. So I'm just gonna leave that there because that is what I was talking about with execution. Overall, lots of space. Those seats could fold down and you could put bicycles. You could get that 80 inch TV that you want and whatever else that you could fit in the back of this thing. Obviously, just like a lot of SUVs, it has the automatic rear tailgate. It's gonna close down for you. But this is what is so wonderful about you know, the car industry today, you have lots of choices and this is just one other option if you are in the market for an SUV. But if you're ready, I'm ready to wrap this one up. All right guys, it's been a wonderful day here at Moss Nissan. I definitely gotta thank David Moss and the whole Moss Nissan family here in Newport Ritchie, uh, Florida for just opening up the doors even on a rainy, day, a rainy day and allowing us to film this 2019 Nissan Rogue SV. I guess the bottom line is, is today we have a plethora of options when it comes to how we want to travel. And I know a lot of you, just like a lot of other Americans, are moving towards that SUV direction or need an SUV. And this is just another great option from Nissan to fit in line with the rest of the SUVs that they have to offer. But if these are the types of cars you like to see on Rainey's Rides, leave a comment in that comment section. If you have not subscribed yet, honestly, what are you waiting for? We go from SUVs to 1200 horsepower Nissan GTRs back down to Subaru Crosstrex and whatnot. So a nice variety, daily uploads each and every day. So make sure you hit that button. If you are a subscriber, thank you. Thank you for being part of this journey with me. Thank you for your care, your dedication, and your trust. It's so amazing to have you on this journey and it just keeps getting better, better, and better. If you haven't checked out my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages, all Radies Rides original content all the time. So you definitely want to check that out. Merch. A lot of you are saying, hey, I want to help promote Radies Rides. Get yourself a shirt, a bag, a hoodie, bandana, the whole nine yards. How do you do that? There's a bubble somewhere on the screen in the upper right hand corner right now. Click that, it'll take you to Spreadshirt and you could help support the channel any which way you see fit. And obviously we are very grateful for that. Speaking of being grateful, big shout out to Big Guns McGee, Tom Moshner, one second place in his powerlifting competition. He's getting ready for the next one. So definitely show him some love because he's making sure to bring you the camera angles of these SUVs. And just like always guys, I'll see you on the next ride.